Today is the first day of the SK2 journey, the facial treatment essence. I'm still getting a hang of this dropper. It's too valuable. My skin feels bouncier. I'll like get it in there, you know. Your face is your most precious real estate. I love how fast it absorbs. It's been a interesting journey so far. Today is the last day of my journey. I'm gonna get every last drop. Goodbye, Madeira. Good morning, I am Dr. Shireen Idris, a cosmetic dermatologist based in New York City, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a deep dive into the SK2 facial treatment essence. When SK2 approached me to try this essence, their Patera essence, I am honest when I'm going to say I was curious about the delivery of this ingredient and what it was about, but B, I was also skeptical because for me, I've heard about Patera. I've heard about it for many years, but I've never quite understood what it was, what it does. And quite frankly, I've always associated SK2 with one of those really shishi, bougie, extremely expensive luxury brands that you buy at duty free at the airport in order to get the best bang for your buck. So when they asked me to test out their facial treatment essence, I, I was a little bit nervous, apprehensive, and excited that somebody was going to give it to me to try it out. But also, I wanted to make sure that it was okay with all of you. And so I polled my Instagram audience to ask if this is something they would be interested in me doing. And 72% of you guys said, do it. So I took one for the team. And for the last 30 days, I introduced nothing into my skincare routine except for this guy which I used twice a day, religiously, every morning, every night, three to four drops on my face and neck and more, which I will show you guys, um, over the past 30 days. And I'm excited to do a deep dive with all of you into this journey that I've been through. For those of you who don't know, my skin tends to be a little bit on the drier side. My biggest skin issues tend to revolve around redness and hyperpigmentation, especially in the form of melasma that comes and goes. Um, my skincare routine has traditionally incorporated an exfoliating acid followed by a antioxidant serum, a moisturizer, and sunscreen. That's it sort of in a nutshell if I had to simplify it. I have never been one to incorporate a toner or an essence because I've never really known what a toner meant. And so I did a deep dive on it actually a few weeks ago, if you guys want to check it out. But in a nutshell, toners and essences are different. Toners traditionally are astringents or chemical exfoliants that help to exfoliate the superficial layer of your skin, whereas essences deliver a targeted active ingredient. And so how do you incorporate an essence into your skincare routine? Well, in the morning after washing your face and before applying any sort of serum, moisturizer, or sunscreen, and at night after exfoliating with a chemical acid, you incorporate the essence before uh, any form of serum or moisturizers. So with that being said, um, let's dive in. I am today at day 30 of having used the Patera Essence. My skin definitely feels much more hydrated, much more dewy and much more luminescent. I do feel my texture is softer. I feel like I look more radiant and I feel like my skin has a much better bounce to it. How um, do we apply this essence? I don't know about you, but this baby was very expensive and there was no way I was gonna let a greedy cotton pad <laughs> absorb the goodness of this liquid. So I did not use a cotton pad. Plus, cotton pads are not the most eco-sustainable option out there unless you're using a reusable one and I do not have time for that in my life. Instead, I just put the essence directly onto the palms of my hands and applied it directly onto the skin of my face, neck, and any extra on the back of my hands as it is an often overlooked area and even my chest if I had more so that day. Um, I felt I got a bigger bang for my buck. I felt the product had a much longer playtime on my skin and that my skin absorbed it much more instantaneously and directly and I felt like there was less wastage overall both economically and from a sustainable standpoint. So my advice is ditch the cotton pads and just use it directly onto your skin. So now onto the exciting part of this video we are gonna do a deep dive into the ingredient list, the NQ list, and what is the actual purpose of this essence? Because like I mentioned, essences deliver a targeted active ingredient. So without further ado, let's go through the ingredient list. It is made up of seven ingredients. That's it. Galactomyces ferment filtrate, which is their proprietary patera. Butylene glycol, pentylene glycol, 
water, sodium benzoate, methyl parabens, and sorbic acid. That is a total of seven. So to simplify it, it basically consists of their hero exclusive ingredient, the patera, plus glycols, which are basically humectants that hold on to water, and preservatives to ensure that it stays fresh and it delivers its most potent active ingredient the longest. So I am going to say though, when I first opened the product, I was a little skeptical because it does look like water. So I, w I got on the phone, I called up SK2. I was very lucky that they put me in touch with their head scientist who assured me that the formulation is actually more than 90% Patera. And if they could have, they would have made it 100%. Obviously, they had to incorporate some other ingredients to ensure that it lasts throughout time. It can last transportation in which products undergo extreme heat or extreme cold, depending on how it's getting transported across the world. And they wanted to make sure that its efficacy and its potency lasts, the, you know, stands the test of time. And so that's why they have the other ingredients as well, but that they wanted to definitely make sure that it was at least more than 90% Patera in every single formulation and batch that is made. So how did they discover the origin of Patera? The story starts in a master brewery, a sake brewery rather in Japan, where they noticed that the master brewer's hands appeared much more youthful than the skin of their faces and necks, which Unfortunately, we're a little bit beaten down by age and time and life, but their hands, however, maintained a youthful and plump appearance. This led SK2 to do a little bit more digging and research. And what came about was SK2's exclusive Galactomyces ferment filtrate, which is a naturally derived ingredient through the fermentation process, which is proprietary to them, of this unique yeast. So this led me to the next question, which is, how do fermented ingredients actually benefit the skin or why do fermented ingredients benefit the skin? And it turns out there are three important reasons as to why fermented ingredients are good and useful for your skin. Number one, it increases the potency of the active ingredient by utilizing the yeast. And through the fermentation process, that yeast secretes enzymes, which makes the active ingredient much more potent. Number two, it enhances penetration of the active ingredient because through fermentation, the ingredient gets broken down into a smaller size. The smaller the size of the active ingredient, the better it can penetrate deep into your skin. And number three, it increases the preservation of the active ingredient because through fermentation, a metabolite is created that prevents the growth of unwanted bacteria, therefore preserving the life of your product over time and making it safer for you to use over time. And I found all those reasons to be absolutely fascinating and to make sense. I mean, think about it. If you're lucky enough to drink a wine from 1945, okay, fine, from 1987 or from 1995 and not get food poisoning, it's because it's been fermented. So let's get into the technology now. Through the fermentation process, a cocktail of minerals, amino acids, vitamins, organic acids are produced. And this cocktail resembles our skin's natural NMF. Natural NMF meaning natural moisturizing factor. And by being fermented, we just talked about how it increases the penetration of the product. By delivering a higher penetration of a product that resembles our skin's own NMF, we are increasing the barrier function of our own skin. And by doing so, let's talk about the natural moisturizing factor of the skin before we understand what that does. So the NMF allows our skin to hold on to water and to draw that hydration into our corneocytes, meaning our skin cells. And hydration is super important for our skin for several reasons. Number one, it enables the skin to retain its plasticity and to protect it from damage. Number two, the skin renews itself every 28 days. And by being hydrated correctly, it allows for a much more efficient process to get rid of those very superficial dead skin cells that need to be sloughed off naturally throughout the 28 day process. And then finally, it does contribute to the optimum environment for your skin's barrier and to make your barrier function the most efficient it can be, protecting you and your skin in the process. 
So Pitera, by nature of highly resembling our own NMF, helps our skin to fortify its skin barrier function and not just to retain hydration but also to protect it and to give it a durability over time that our skin inherently loses. So I found all of this to be absolutely eye-opening and fascinating. Something that just looks like water can actually do so much more. Which leads me to the feel of the product. As you can see, it's been 30 days and it's all done. I actually opened up this stopper to get the most out of the product on my last day of usage. Um, as I mentioned, I was skeptical at first because I felt like it looked like water, but what I was pleasantly surprised to discover is that upon application, although it is extremely lightweight because it feels like water, it gets absorbed incredibly fast into your skin. And I'm not surprised now that we understand the whole fermentation process and what fermentation does to our skin and how it increases penetration and absorbency of the product itself. But it gets absorbed incredibly fast without drying your skin out in the process. I don't know about you, but if you lick your lips, for example, you can put you know, something that is saliva, a liquid onto your lips, but it dries out very fast and dries out your lips in the process, which leads you to wanna to lick your lips again. Here, you put it on your skin and your skin absorbs it without drying out and makes your skin feel nice and plump and bouncy. And this then leads me to the scent. Obviously, this one's empty, <laughs> but it does have a scent. And when I was speaking to the scientist in Japan, I asked him about this scent. And he said, what you're smelling is the actual scent of the Galactomyces ferment filtrate, the proprietary ingredient. And they did not choose to add any fragrance to this product to mask the scent because they did not want to compromise the efficacy and the potency of the product itself. So what we're smelling is the fermented yeast. And quite frankly, I like it. And I respect that. I respect that they're not trying to hide what they are, but rather they're more focused on delivering high quality and effective ingredients. So kudos to SK2 for not trying to mask their scent and just, you know, being stinky and proud. So I'm with it. Although honestly, I don't find it that stinky. It does smell a little bit yeasty, but it's not stinky. So respect. Now the packaging. The packaging is where I had a little bit of trouble. A, it is a glass bottle. So one might think, and it is true, that glass is more eco-sustainable than plastic, but there is a little asterisk to be said about glass. With glass comes more weight, which does feel nice and luxurious, but with more weight comes a larger carbon footprint when being transported across the world because it's heavier and therefore you need more energy to get it moved from one place to the next. My second issue with glass is that glass breaks much easier than plastic does. So having two little toddlers at home, I was like holding on to this bottle and putting it on the highest chef shelf, making sure my daughter does not get her hands on it because she wants to get her hands on every single product I use. And the third thing to consider, which is honestly not a glass issue, but a human issue, glass is most often not actually recycled because we do not recycle it. In fact, I found out that 33%, 33% of waste glass is recycled and that's it. The other 67%, <laughs> just have to do math. The other 67% is not recycled. And that's on us to do a better effort at separating this cap because this is plastic, so you can't put it together. Taking off the stopper, because again, this is plastic and it cannot be put together, and taking the glass bottle and putting this in the recycle bin. The effort we will be doing for our planet and for our future generations who will have the luxury of using this product, hopefully, um, is massive. So just separate the, pot, the top, take off the stopper, and just put it in the bin. And then you can recycle the glass bottle. And finally, my last issue with the packaging was, was this little stopper. I left it on throughout the duration of using the product because I didn't think of taking it off until the last day when I had a few drops left and I wanted to get them off. But 
I, looking back, I do wonder if taking off the stopper and using this in a sort of airless pump format would have been more efficient than just having it in a dropper form. Because if it didn't have the stopper, way too much would come out. And I feel like a dropper would have been much more efficient and a lot less wastage for this very, very precious liquid not to just be splashing out. I thought of a mister, but something that mists would have a lot of loss factor in the process, and I don't want that either. So I think, SK2, if you're watching, I think a nice little pump for this would be really helpful for people like me. And I don't know if other people resonate with this, but not to waste product on a dropper or have too much come out. So those are my little kind of on the packaging. And finally, let's talk about the results. So I do feel that my skin is much more quenched. Given that it is summertime, I oftentimes try to avoid any sort of moisturizer because it's much more humid outside. And I've often struggled finding that right sort of product that's going to quench my skin without making me feel greasy. And I will say that I've been very impressed by this essence. I did not feel the need to top it off with a moisturizer, especially in summer when it is so hot and humid outside. It was the perfect product to just deliver the right amount of hydration for my skin. And my skin tends to veer on the drier side. So if you have normal or oily skin, you might need even less and a little less will go an even longer way for you. So you'll get an even bigger bang for your buck. Um, I will say also that the texture of my skin does look much more smooth and luminescent. Um, my pigmentation is still present, but I wasn't expecting my brown spots to fully disappear in 30 days. So looking back on the last 30 days, I started off as a skeptic. I hated the stopper on this bottle. I've grown accustomed to it. It's not the worst thing in the world, although I would prefer a pump. Um, I will say I am a convert into essences, and I'm not saying that because this is a sponsored post by SK2, but because I have firsthand experienced and seen the result that it can do for your skin when you keep your skin care to a minimum. Um, I definitely think that in the first 10 days, I did not see a difference, and I had to stick with it to really start to notice it, and I think it was around day 14, 15, that I started to see the differences in my skin. And now at day 30, I really do think, looking back, it made a very beautiful difference in the appearance and feel of my skin, where my skin now looks much more radiant and feels much more bouncy with very minimal effort. And so to recap, who is this sustainable for? I think all skin types could technically use this product. I would beware though, if you are somebody with very sensitive skin, approach with caution because of the pentylene glycol and butylene glycol as they can be potential allergens. If you have active dermatological conditions on your face, I would recommend that you test this product first on a discrete area, maybe here on the skin underneath your ear or in front of your ear on your face um, to really see how your skin responds to it before going gun ho and applying it all over your face. It's always Good advice regardless if you're somebody who has something going on or if you have very sensitive skin to test it out first before diving in feet first. And finally, what is the main use of this? It's a daily essence that I think to conclude hydrates effectively and very efficiently without leaving any sort of film or residue and improves the elasticity and the plasticity of your skin while reducing the appearance of very fine textural discrepancies on your skin. And I did notice that over the last 30 days. Price point, let's, this is where it hurts. <laughs> $99 for this two and a half ounce bottle. And that's why I think trying to get the most bang for your buck is key. $185 for a five and a half ounce bottle and $235 for a seven and a half ounce bottle. So birthday gift, holiday gift, appreciation gift, I'm sure the person on the receiving end will highly appreciate it as much as I did. I am Dr. Shireen Idris. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into my Patera story and understanding the science behind this iconic product, the SK2 Facial Treatment Essence. Hope you have a great day.